Thank you. Um, I assume that starting a small business sometimes feels like the most difficult job uh, that one can have, but I have to say that following the borough president may be right up there with that, but I will try to keep your attention after that. Um, I want to start today by sharing with you a newspaper report that I recently read that referenced a topic with which I think we are all, all too familiar, economic malaise. According to the report, the money market, stocks, and real estate are in a most extraordinary condition. No prospect of change appears on the edge of the horizon. We are at sea without rudder or compass. The sun rises and sets, but who can tell where we are? Indeed, this is a question that many of us are likely asking ourselves these days, just as they did when this report first appeared in the New York Herald in 1836. And I think that this should all give, some of us, all give us all some comfort as we navigate what surely are extremely difficult fiscal and economic waters ahead. The fact is that as the borough president said, New York has been here before. And each time the city has seemingly faced insurmountable odds, it not only overcame them, but emerged on the other side a more prosperous city. And in fact, we don't have to look back to the 19th century to remind us of this. Simply look back to 2002, when Mayor Bloomberg first entered office. As he took the oath of office on the steps of City Hall, the embers of the World Trade Center were literally still burning. Questions then abounded as to whether New York would recover and whether businesses and residents would flee. In fact, as we all know, the opposite happened. We went through one of the greatest booms the city has ever known. The city achieved its highest bond rating in 80 years. Last year, we, rec we welcomed a record 47 million tourists to the city, making us the number one tourist destination in the United States for the second year running. We rezoned fully one-sixth of the land area of New York, six thousand city blocks, and we've literally changed the physical face of our city. In Hudson Yards, for example, the district just west of Midtown, we laid the groundwork for the city's next great central business district, rezoning the area for 40 million square feet of commercial, residential, hotel, and retail space. Using a creative financing mechanism, the city raised two billion dollars to extend the number seven train from its current terminus at Times Square to 11th Avenue and 34th Street. This is the first major expansion of the subway in a generation, and work on that project is underway and expected to be completed within just a few short years. In Queens and the Bronx, with an investment of about $400 million, the city induced the Mets and the Yankees to invest over $2 billion in private funds to create thousands of construction jobs, thousands of permanent jobs, new infrastructure, and to take off of the hands of the city maintenance obligations that were costing the city tens of millions of dollars a year, and to create, in addition to that, over $130 million in net fiscal benefits for the city. Today, these new stadium projects are open for business, welcoming fans who cheer on their favorite teams, and more importantly, keeping real New Yorkers employed and generating real tax revenues for the city and state. Notwithstanding our having been here before, though, or the glimmers of hope that we've begun to see in the stock market, the fact is that we once again find ourselves in challenging times. I think that a few statistics are illustrative of these challenges. For example, unemployment in New York City rose from 4.9% in April 2008 to 8% in April 2009. Meanwhile, the latest projections from the city's budget office are that wages in New York City are expected to decline by $39 billion from $293 billion in 2008 to $254 billion in 2010. In addition, we all know that this downturn has had a disproportionate effect on Wall Street, which, as we know, is a very important industry to the fiscal well-being of the city. 
By way of illustration, though at the peak of the boom in 2007, Wall Street accounted for only about 9% of private sector employment in New York, it actually accounted for 34% of private sector payroll at the same time. And when you have a year like 2008, when the worst stock market decline since 1931 has occurred, and over a trillion dollars in financial services write-offs have been experienced, it can't help but impact our city. And so the latest projections from the city's budget office are that between fiscal year 2008 and fiscal year 2010, city revenues are likely to drop by $5 billion. When faced with statistics like these, a natural question to pose is, what do we do? After our experience following September 11th, we know the right approach. And that approach is to develop a plan and put all of the resources of government into seeing that plan to fruition. And that is exactly what Mayor Bloomberg has recently done, unveiling his newly minted five borough economic opportunity plan, which is designed to usher the city through the downturn as quickly as possible and to resume our trajectory of growth. This plan is a three-part strategy that will see us through to prosperity by creating jobs for New Yorkers today, investing in jobs for tomorrow by diversifying our economy, and building affordable and attractive neighborhoods. Let me take a few moments to go through each part of this plan. The first aim of the mayor's plan is to create jobs for New Yorkers today. One way that we're striving to do this is by making city government more business friendly. For instance, we have proposed targeted cuts to the city's unincorporated business tax, a form of double taxation that's virtually unique to New York City. Our proposal could lower or eliminate this tax for some 17,000 small businesses across the five boroughs. Though doing so requires approval in Albany, and as many of you know, that's never a guarantee, this remains something we feel very strongly about, and we are working extremely hard to implement this. We're also employing city resources creatively in order to spur private development. We recently launched a program, for example, that we call Capital Access, where we've used about $5 million in city funds to guarantee nearly $14 million in loans from banks and other institutions to small and micro businesses. One example of a company that's benefited from this program is a sweater company in Bushwick called Q Sweaters Incorporated. Due to the economic downturn, the company's owner, Luis Guevara, has, was finding it difficult to make his rent payments and meet other expenses. But thanks to his loan of $15,000 through capital access, he's now optimistic that his business will in fact survive. In fact, since the capital access program started, our private sector partners have provided 29 loans like these, totaling nearly a million dollars that have gone to businesses throughout the five boroughs. At least 10 of those businesses are located right here in Brooklyn, where the loans range from as little as $1,500 for a soy processing facility in Bushwick to as much as $150,000 for a refueling company located in Greenpoint. Another way we're working to create jobs today is by investing in infrastructure projects. Now, there's a general consensus that, at all levels of government, that this kind of investment makes sense in a downturn because it's a quick way to get people back to work. But in addition to that, the Bloomberg administration understands that this kind of investment is also crucial because it ensures that when the economy recovers, which we all know it will, that New York City will be well positioned to capture future growth and economic activity. To that end, the city's capital budget for this fiscal year alone stands at a record $10 billion, which is a 5% increase over the previous year. Of course, even the city's capital budget is not immune to the downturn. And this is why we've been asked by the mayor to cut capital spending in fiscal years 2010 to 2019 by approximately 30%, no doubt a significant sum. But even with these cuts, it's important to keep in perspective that between fiscal year 2009 and fiscal year 2013, five years, we will be spending 40% more than the seven years prior to Mayor Bloomberg's first term in office. In short, we still plan to spend at near record levels.